So at this point, I feel like I'm obligated to say that I am not biased on this topic. Because let's be honest, if I don't say that, somebody will accuse me of being an Intel fanboy. But just to make it fair, you really also shouldn't be using the dual-core Celerons and Pentiums that Intel sells at a very tempting price. Anyways, this is a simple cautionary video to inform some people before making a purchase, especially if they're uninformed on CPUs. So, if you've ever gone to PC Part Picker or any computer hardware retail site, you've probably noticed that, for example, the FX8350 is marketed as an 8-core CPU. Because, surprise, surprise, it is technically an 8-core CPU but not in the same sense that an Intel CPU would be. The way an FX CPU works is the cores are stored in modules. For an FX8350, it has four modules with two cores in each. Each core shares a certain set of resources, producing more heat and decreasing efficiency. This is also why in Cinebench, the 8350 shows up as a quad core, or a 6300 shows up as a triple core CPU. This is obviously a very simplified version of this subject, and if you go check out Science Studio's video, which I will link in the description, he gives a very good explanation on how these CPUs work. Of course, this is not the only reason. With the aging pile driver and bulldozer architecture these CPUs use, it gives you a bad price to performance when purchasing one of these CPUs. Because mind you, these CPUs are running on 5 year old architecture now. Instead of an FX4300, for example, you should just buy an i3-7100, or wait for the new Ryzen 3 CPUs. The FX4300 is not only slower than the i3, but is on an outdated, limited socket type with fewer upgrade path choices. So ultimately, buy a modern i3, or wait for Ryzen 3 or 5, depending on which company you'd rather buy from, instead of buying an outdated FX series CPU. On another note, these CPUs will bottleneck quite a good amount of newer GPUs, or at least the higher end ones. And of course, because of the outdated unoptimized architecture, they are not the best for gaming and other related tasks like newer Intel or AMD CPUs are. Anyways, thanks for watching. I really hope I helped some of you out, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.